right, so today we're finishing off our little Mabco 302 crate engine. I guess you might say we're at the long block phase now. And um, if you follow my channel, we've been going through some of the tech as we have uh, been, I guess, putting this engine together. So we went through how to degree the camshaft, uh, determining your proper um, push rod length, and just some other little parts and pieces, installing head studs and some other good stuff like that. But today what I want to go ahead and do is go over um, your rocker arm alignment here and then go through uh, how to set your preload on your rocker arms or I guess what a lot of people like to call it is uh, you know they like to say adjust your valves and we'll go through the process of how to do that so um, we're not going to mess around today we're going to jump right into it so let's go so I'm sure you can see here that we already have our five six seven and eight cylinders done on our driver's side and we have yet to do our one two three four cylinder on our passenger side on our little small block Ford now if you're at this point I'm assuming you've already gone ahead and determined what push rod length you need and if you haven't done this I encourage you to watch the video where I go over the process of how to do this and get the right measurement so that when you do order in your push rods they are indeed the right length so moving forward today we've already done that we got our new push rods in from trick flow um, this is a budget build, but those are still pretty good units. We have our comp cams adjustable um, guide plates, which are really nice. I really do not like the solid guide plates, and you'll see why as we go through this video, why having some adjustability is really important here. Obviously, we have our um, ARP rocker studs, and we got some Scorpion uh, roller rockers, which is a 1.6 ratio, and that's stock for the small block Ford. Um, these are also budget units, but um, very good quality. I've used these a lot, and I've never had any issues with them to date. So um, anyway, let's get everything all set up, and we'll jump in. So I think in this video here, we're going to stick to just doing cylinder one. Now each of the cylinders are independent, so you should be able to see everything you need to see just by doing this cylinder. So um, we'll keep it just on cylinder one for today. Now starting off, I want to begin with the rocker alignment. And that is um, the process of making sure the tip of our rocker arm is touching the uh, tip of our valve stem in the center. We don't want our rockers running off to the side. That's a quick way to have a broken rocker arm. So the first thing here is in doing this, I just want to get cylinder one to um, the compression stroke or top dead center but the compression stroke will do so as you see here right now we're on the intake stroke we're on the intake valve and we'll just rotate until that guy goes down should be on the compression stroke next there we go all right so moving forward I want to use a little bit of thread sealer on my rocker studs now if not both at least on my uh, rocker stud that's going to be on my intake valve and I'll show you why here really quick and this is an interesting deal and it's caught me off guard one time in particular where it took me a long time to figure out what was wrong with a fellow's engine but eventually we were able to track it down um, you know I had a it just didn't run right and it turned out to be a vacuum leak and um, if, if you look here you know these are supposed to not go all the way through now here's our exhaust valve we're not going all the way through on this drilling but look at this guy Oop goes all the way through so we don't want to have a vacuum leak develop there or we don't want oil going into our engine or anything of that nature so um, what we're going to go ahead and do is just use thread sealer on um, at the bare minimum on our intake studs and you know really I'm just going to go ahead and use it on our exhaust studs as well and it works for um, a torque lubricant as well so um, I'm going to go ahead and dope those up we'll get our guide plates set in place and move along all right so we got our guide plates on here we got our uh, rocker studs on here but not necessarily torqued down they just got a little bit of resistance and that's what we want and now we can go ahead and throw our rocker arms on here and you need two of these because it's almost like a balancing act and we'll show that really quick now also 
Um, when you're doing this, you want to have your locks threaded all the way out so you don't have any issues there when you're just trying to mock stuff up. And always with your rockers, the flat side where your locker comes down on needs to be obviously facing up or else you're going to cause or I guess have issues as well. So anyway, we got everything set on there. And basically what we're going to do is move these guys independent of each other. So we want to get them as centered as possible. And as we move these, you can see that guide plate back there moving. So we just want to true these up in the center. So we got this one on here. It's good and centered. And now I'm going to go ahead and just tighten this one up. All right, so we're going to remove this guy. We want to do that very carefully to make sure that we don't turn that guide plate at all. I'm going to drop our wrench down. The reason we left this snug is so that just with a little turn, it locks it in. It's not walking around on us. So there we go. That should be good and aligned still. Perfect. And now we can make our final adjustment on our exhaust valve here. Just like you saw how we did on the intake valve. Nice and aligned through the center. Obviously we don't want to be working off to the side of the valve stem. So nice and aligned. Everything's good and happy. Pull this guy straight up and off. And then we'll snug this guy down. And you want to wait until both are snug down before you torque anything. You know, just so you don't mess anything up as you go along. And you just want to be patient and check everything. Um, sometimes when you do tighten them down, they will move a little bit. So again, you just want to be patient. All right, so these are looking really good. We still got um, some side to side movement, which is honestly really good. We want to have that so that we know everything isn't in a bind. If we couldn't rotate this back and forth, we would know that um, we're contacting something, either the uh, push rod guide here going through the head or our guide plates are misadjusted. You know, you just really don't want to have things in a bind. That's the fastest way to destroy your valve train. So we still have play, and within that play, we're still working through the center of that valve stem. So I'm really good and happy about that setup. Now I'm sure at this point you're wondering, um, you know, what the deal is with how these rockers end up being a little slanted. Now um, we refer to this as pigeon toed, and it's sometimes with these small block Fords what you have to do when they have larger valves to keep them on the valve stem. So. If you see here to fit the larger valves, everything's not necessarily perfectly aligned with our push rod hole here. So again, um, this is why those adjustable guide plates are just so important. Um, you know, you're plenty safe to run up in the RPM in this setup. You know, your push rods are at a very, very slight angle versus if your push rods were straight and you were running way off center of the valve stem. That's just really not what you want at all. So. Um, I've run a lot of engines way up in RPM like this. Other guys have because, you know, I've asked around. It is kind of weird, but, you know, we're all kind of on the same school of thought that, you know, this this works just fine. None of us have ever had any issues. So if you're curious about that, that's just my, my quick two cents on that piece. So now that we got everything good and aligned here, we're going to go ahead and pull our rocker arms back off. We're going to go ahead and torque these guys down and I think for aluminum cylinder heads ARP calls for uh, 45 foot-pounds and uh, that's what we're gonna do obviously they're independent of each other so we're just gonna torque them all the way to 45 and then torque the next one all the way to 45 and we'll be good to go <music> studs torque down we can go ahead and move on and as you saw there um, I did go ahead and verify that we were still working through the center of those valve stems that's super important so after I went through the torque there I went ahead and got a look at that 
So now we're going to go ahead and adjust the valves. So what I like to see is the opposing lifter at its full lifted dwell point when I'm adjusting um, its opposing valve on that cylinder. So um, for example, when our lifter here would be all the way up at its dwell point, I'm going to go ahead and set the preload on our rocker on this side. And again, you always want to set your rocker preload on the base circle of your cam. If you have any of your lift factored into that, when you get back to your base circle, you know, you're going to have a bunch of play in there. So that's really not what you want. All right, we're going to bring our exhaust lifter up to its full dwell point. Now at this time, we know that our intake lifter is on the base circle of the cam and we can confidently adjust our intake rocker and know we're doing it right. So really, this is pretty simple, and I'm not sure why it always seems to get so confused on forums and Facebook and every other thing that people ask questions on. So basically, all I'm going to do is spin my push rod and run down my rocker nut, and the very moment that I feel any resistance on my uh, push rod here and its rotation, that's when we know that we've taken out all the lash. So right there, got a little bit of resistance on my push rod and now we can go ahead and set the preload now i'm going to drop my wrench on here and i'm going to do one half turn so we're a little bit past straight up now we're going to go a little bit um, past six o'clock so that is one half turn and i like to use a fairly minimum preload but um, it really does get the job done, and I've never had any issues in doing it in this way. So while we're holding our 5 8 uh, wrench here steady, we're going to go ahead and run down our little locker nut. So it doesn't, there's not a torque spec per se on it, you know, you just want to have a good feel on that, know it's good and tight. Now, another thing that can happen is if your rocker nut uh, ends in a way where your locker is sticking way out like if I were to tighten it down in this orientation Then your rocker studs are too long and you really want to address that because you really want to get all your threads on this locker So again things don't fly apart up in the rpms And anyway, there we go. We got just over 20 thousandths preload on our rocker here And we want to have between 20 thousandths to 60 thousandths as the spec so I'm confident that we're in good shape. So that's pretty much it on my little rundown here of aligning our rocker arms and then setting our lifter preload or properly adjusting our valves. Now if you do want to see any of the other little tech bits that we did as we went through this engine, um, you know like degreeing up the camshaft or something of that nature, I'm going to go ahead and just throw those at the end of this video for your convenience as always. If you have any questions, comments, drop them below. I'm pretty active on the channel so I generally do respond. Um, but that's pretty much it for me. <laughs> I've kind of come down to the wire on this engine, so I really got to get a uh, rocking and rolling on it here. So I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>